Besides shortcutting long division, synthetic division offers us something else that's pretty useful. Via the remainder theorem, we have this statement here that says that if you have a polynomial f of x, then if you're evaluating f of r, so f of r equals the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus r. So in plain English, to kind of translate that for us, whatever our divisor is, r, think of that as the input, as the number you're plugging into the function, and whatever the remainder is, that's the output. So, for example, if we look at the example here, so we want to find what f of negative 2 is for this function f of x. So what I would have to do is I'd have to plug in negative 2 in for x, where I see it here, here, here. I'd have to raise it to the fourth power, multiply it by 4, raise it to the third power, multiply it by 16, raise it to the second power, multiply it by 7, and then add and subtract all those numbers together. Instead, we could use synthetic division. I think we're going to see that that's going to be a little bit easier than having to go through what I just described. So if I set up my synthetic division box, my divisor is going to be the input number here. So that's going to be negative 2. And then inside the box are going to be the coefficients of our polynomial here. So we're going to have 4, negative 16, 7. Now notice the x term is missing, so I do need to have a placeholder for that and then 20. So if we extend this a little bit here, and so now we can go ahead and do our synthetic division. So I bring down the 4 to get us started, and then we multiply on the diagonal. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Add in the vertical direction. Negative 16 plus negative 8 gives us negative 24. Multiply on the diagonal. Negative 2 times negative 24 is 48. Add in the vertical. 55, multiply on the diagonal, negative 2 times 55 is negative 110, add in the vertical direction, so I'm just going to get 0 plus negative 110 is negative 110, and we have one more multiplication, negative 2 times negative 210, or negative 110 gives us 220, and then we add in the vertical direction, 20 plus 220, 240. So remember that last number is our remainder. And so what we have found is that when we plug negative 2 into this function, our output is 240. And so I would argue that that's a lot easier way to get to that answer than, like I said before, raise negative 2 to the fourth power and then multiply by 4. And then raise negative 2 to the third power, multiply it by negative 16. So on and so on to get to that same result. So while it may be debatable whether using synthetic division or just plugging in negative 2 everywhere is easier to figure out what f of negative 2 is, we're going to see that there's no doubt that it's much easier to use synthetic division to find f of 1 half, to find the output when you plug 1 half in. Because again, if I had to plug in 1 half for x everywhere, I'd have to raise it to the fourth power, I'd have 1 16th times 4, I'd have all these fractions I'd have to carry through the problem. Instead, we set up our synthetic division with 1 half as the number on the outside here, and then we use our coefficients. 4, negative 16, 7, don't forget the 0 placeholder for the x, and 20. Now we can roll through it by bringing the 4 down, multiply on the diagonal here, so half of 4 is 2, negative 16 and 2 is going to be negative 14, half of negative 14 is negative 7, add in the vertical direction, we get negative 7 plus 7 is 0, half of 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, half of 0 is 0, and then 20 plus 0, we get 20. So the output when 1 half is the input into this function is 20. And so I would argue that this is a much faster way to get this result using this concept of the remainder theorem. That whatever your divisor is is your input, whatever your remainder is is your output, is a much better way to get the answer than to actually take one half and plug it in for x everywhere in this function. There are times where that's faster, just plugging the number in is faster, but this is certainly a case where this remainder theorem becomes a very handy tool.